Okay, first things first, we need two cans of young green jackfruit, or you just need an unripe jackfruit. I mean, either one's gonna really work. If you have an unripe jackfruit, I have a video on jackfruit where I'm, I kind of tear apart a ripened jackfruit. It wasn't really the right thing. I just, I bought it unripe and then it ripened. Well, anyways, so two cans of unripe jackfruit, about 20 ounces. Before we get started with the jackfruit, we're actually going to be making our chicken flavor broth. Now, this whole recipe is based off of uh, one of my old old jackfruit chicken recipes, which is going to be in my upcoming cookbook. I'm super stoked about that. This is just a little teaser, you know, but uh, more information is gonna be coming soon on that. This is just a way so you can see how you could like adapt almost any one of my like unmeat recipes for any regular recipe that's out there. Uh, so let's get going. Let's make our chicken broth first. Now I'm just gonna add one and a half cups of water to a medium saucepan, and then one tablespoon of my chicken flavor broth mix. Now this is Shengi, uh, this specific brand. This chicken flavor broth is completely vegan. It's 100% plant-based, there's nothing in it. It's all seasonings and spices, but no actual chicken. Along with that, I'm also gonna be adding one tablespoon of the magic mushroom seasoning. This is mushroom seasoning. Uh, again, I'll leave a link to the Amazon store, which has like a lot of this stuff in it. Uh, mushroom, mushroom seasoning is incredible. It's kind of like an MSG replacement. Uh, I also use it as a replacement for yeast. In my book, I'm actually using two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, uh, but I really like this as a replacement. I just, I don't have any nutritional yeast right now, so I'm gonna use half in mushroom seasoning. It works out pretty well to add that glutamate savory flavor. So let's go ahead and just bring that to a boil. And while we're bringing that to a boil, let's go to the next step. So for the next step, we're just gonna be draining and rinsing our jackfruit. And then all I'm gonna do is just kinda like squeeze the hard ends. I just kinda wanna break them apart. We're not gonna be getting rid of them. We're just gonna squeeze the hard ends just to break them apart. And then also squeeze to remove the seeds. We don't want any seeds in this mixture. It's gonna change the texture. We just want it to be the jackfruit and the ends. We're also gonna be cleaning that under like a cold water. Make sure you use like a cold water. Now, I mean, you could see how much jackfruit kind of takes on really like a very meaty kind of texture, like almost like a very nice pooled chicken or chicken salad type of texture. Uh, the only thing I'm doing now is just kind of like going through, you probably saw me squeezing it a bit. I just wanna make sure that the ends are broken up really nice. You don't want big, solid, chunky bits in there. You want this to be pretty broken up. It's gonna kind of help form a better patty in the end or a better chicken tender, because that's what we're doing. We're doing like chicken fingers almost. So all we're gonna do is just dump this in our broth that's already hot, give it a good mix, turn that heat up, and we're gonna boil it down by about half. Um, should only take about 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, we just wanna make sure that that chicken flavor gets infused into this jackfruit. It's really gonna help change that texture from you know fruity to chickeny. Okay, so I would say at least half of this water has boiled down. You can see there's not much of the broth left. A lot of that flavoring is in the jackfruit now. Now at this point, while it's still hot, I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of pea protein powder. Now you can use pea protein, you can use mung bean protein, shoot potato protein. Now our next ingredient to make this chicken before we move forward is methyl cellulose. It'll start to like gel and firm up at above 132 degrees. Right now this just came out and it is about 157 degrees it looks like it. 158. So realistically I just want this to be less than the 135 degrees. I'm hoping to get it to around 120 degrees. I want it to be really below that. So we're just gonna let this sit for just, you know, a few minutes, let, allow it to cool down. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take longer than 15 minutes or so. Hey gang, real quick, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. Junshine Hard Kombucha is the most insanely delicious, better for you alcohol. It's refreshing, low sugar, easy on the gut, gluten-free and full of probiotics. Now, I'm not a big beer drinker and Monica's honestly the wine lover in the house. So when I wanna have a nice drink at the end of the day, when I get done filming, and I wanna have something that's nice and refreshing and Junshine allows me to enjoy my drink and feel good about doing it. Mm. I'm a fan of kombucha, I really love kombuchas, but I don't think you have to be to enjoy this. And it's so good, it's hard to believe that it's 6% alcohol and I don't get a hangover from it. Now my favorite is the blood orange mint. But honestly, I haven't found a Juneshine flavor that I don't enjoy. I have the Hopical Citrus, the Midnight Painkiller, and the Honey Ginger Lemon. And Juneshine is sustainably produced. 1% of all sales are donated to environmental nonprofits. The brewery is powered by 100% renewable solar, and they plant trees for all those used to make their six-pack boxes. So gang, make sure you click the link in the description below to get 
20% off plus free shipping on any of June Shine's variety packs. Oh, and by the way, June Shine is now delivering nationwide. You can get alcohol delivered right to your doorstep easy and hassle-free. Ah, it's awesome. Make sure you try out that Midnight Painkiller. It's really good. Okay, so our jackfruit mixture has cooled down. This is looking really good. So at this point, we just need to add our binder, which is gonna be methyl cellulose. I'll leave a link to where you can pick some methyl cellulose up on Amazon or Modernist Pantry. Uh, I'm gonna use a little about a tablespoon. I'm actually gonna drop in about a half because this was a little bit, a little bit more moisture in it than what I would normally leave. So you want it to be fairly moist because this methyl cellulose is going to suck up a lot of the moisture, a lot of it. Uh, so let's just give that a nice mix. I'm gonna set that aside. And now an important ingredient of Korean chicken is the seasoning salt. To make our seasoning salt, if you don't have Korean seasoning salt, we're gonna do its nine parts salt to one part MSG, which comes out to be about 33 grams of salt. And now we're gonna want about three and a half grams of the mushroom seasoning, or three and a half grams of MSG. Perfect, it's like a super salt. <laughs> Now in a separate bowl, we're gonna mix together our dry batter for our chicken, for our jackfruit chicken. Uh, now, this is essentially pulled from Kenji Lopez's uh, uh, fried chicken recipe, uh, but this dry batter is gonna be just a slight variation. It's gonna use my seasoning salt. Uh, but other than that, we just need a quarter cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of our seasoning salt, and a half teaspoon of baking powder. Now, I'm just gonna whisk this together so that way it's just a really nice, simple kind of dry powdery batter. Now at this point, I'm gonna make my chicken tenders. So for the chicken tender, I'm just gonna grab, you know, a decent amount, chicken tender size piece of our mixture here, kind of make our tender. This might be a little big actually. This might be like more like a chicken breast size. Probably have a lot of chicken tenders here. We might not be able to use all this. I'm just dropping this on a piece of plastic wrap because then we wanna wrap this fairly tight. Now I'm just gonna use the pl pl plastic wrap to kind of press it and shape it. Now once we get it pressed and shaped, we're not gonna be able to really move this mixture that much. We're gonna drop it into our dry batter. Just make sure it's nice and coated. Back onto the plastic wrap, and then we're gonna wrap this really tight really, really tight. And then all we gotta do is just repeat. And if you need to use any extra dry batter, if there's any extra dry batter, you need to just whip up another batch. But this should cover, you know, most of them, half a dozen or so chicken tenders. So at this point, we have all of our little individually wrapped chicken tenders. These are wrapped really tight. That's gonna kind of firm up that jackfruit, kind of make it one thing. We're gonna throw these in the freezer. We want them to freeze. We don't need them to freeze solid. We just need them to freeze firm. Uh, probably 20, 30 minutes or so in the freezer. Shouldn't take that long. Let's throw these in the freezer. We'll be right back. Okay, so our chicken strips are fairly firm. They're workable at this point. This is gonna make them a heck of a lot easier to batter and fry. So let's make our crispy batter. This is gonna go along really easy. So I just filled my large Dutch oven with some peanut oil and we're gonna heat that up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit while we're making this mixture. By the time that's ready to fry, this will all be done, everything will be good. So first things first, we need a half cup of cornstarch, half teaspoon baking powder, half cup all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of our salt mix. Now I'm just gonna whisk this together to make sure that starch and those salts are all evenly dispersed into the mixture. It's one mixture. Now at this point, I have a half cup of ice cold water. I just have some little ice cubes in here. I'll pull those out. I just wanted to make sure that the water was really cold. It's exactly a half cup. We're just gonna whisk this in along with a half of a cup of vodka. Now, like I said, this is from Kenji's recipe and the vodka, from what I understand, is essentially there to evaporate the liquids quicker, making this outer shell a heck of a lot crispier. Now, the way that Kenji describes the consistency of this batter is like thin paint kind of rolling off of the whisk and then dripping back into the batter and completely disappearing. I believe I have that. I actually might be a little bit thinner than what he's describing. I think this might be a little bit thinner than thin paint. 
Uh, we'll see how it comes out. I think it's gonna still be pretty good. Now our oil is almost up to temperature. What we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna set up a little station of having this little batter next to my frying oil. We'll unwrap the chicken, drop it in just a few at a time, pick them up and let the batter drip off. We don't want a whole lot of batter on there, just enough. Uh, once it's dripped off, we're gonna lower it slowly into the oil and we're just gonna agitate them together using, you know, like a large, uh, you know, whatever you have for your oil for frying. Then after about eight minutes or so, once they're nice and golden, we're gonna pull them out and throw them onto a wire rack and then salt them while they're still hot. And oh my gosh, take a look at this Korean fried jackfruit. I mean, wow. Now traditionally I'd say that Korean fried chicken served with like a sweet chili sauce. I didn't have any of that, I thought I did. So I just mixed together some chili garlic sauce with some light agave. And I'll be honest, it comes out perfect. Super good. So this is Korean fried jackfruit. This looks it's awesome. Instead of like your Korean fried chicken, it's your Korean fried jackfruit. They should be super crispy. I'm talking like, hold on, listen to the crisp of this. Wow. Super crispy, super crispy. Okay, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. This tastes like a chicken nugget and the sauce is awesome. Yeah, the sauce is awesome. That's like a secondary, but the, mm -hmm. the jackfruit. Mm. I wouldn't know the difference. I mean, no. I know that I don't eat it chicken, so it's been a long time, but like, I can't tell. I know, let me, I gotta, hold on. L look at this chicken. Tell me that doesn't look like a chicken tender. And then the crunch is insane. Mm -hmm. Very crispy, very crunchy. And then like very chickeny and firm on the inside. It's not like you bite into it and it's soft or anything mm -mm. like that. I honestly think like the jackfruit chicken is probably, it's one of my favorite things. It's so good. It's super, super good. I don't know why more people don't make this, but it is super, super good. And then combining it with Kenji Lopez's Korean fried chicken recipe, holy crap. I don't know what else to say. There was nothing. No. I nothing, love this sauce. Yeah, nothing bad. You like the sauce? It's mm -hmm. that's super, super easy. Yeah. Make it. Let me know what you think. Like I said, the chicken recipe is in my upcoming book. The breading that I have in the book is a little bit different than this, but the Kenji Lopez breading on this is phenomenal. That's really the whole point of the book is to experiment and mix and match the recipes and see what you come up with. So this was just a great exam. I mean, I'm just, I'm just really loving it. Yeah, oh. it's so good. Oh, I'm not in that shot. This shot's just you. <laughs> <laughs>